Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. And hi again, everyone. I'm Jimmy Roberts, and this is your Golf Central update. Big week for the LPGA Tour as it heads to California for the JM Eagle LA Championship. Great field this week, including the Chevron champion from last week, Lilia Vu, back in the town where she played her college golf at UCLA. You see Natalie Gulbis on the list as well. She's making her first LPGA start since the 2022 Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. That's nine plus months ago. She's played on three consecutive U.S. Solheim Cup teams from 05 to 09. U.S. a winner in all three of those years. And then last June, Gulbis was named one of Stacey Lewis's assistant captains for the 2023 U.S. Solheim Cup team for the matches coming up in Spain in September. Earlier, Natalie Gulbis joined us on Golf Central. Hi, Natalie. How's the game these days? Hi. Um, it's good. It's I'm really excited to be here um, playing in the JM Eagle LA Championship. It's not too far from where I'm at in Newport Beach, so it's really fun to uh, to play this event again and also to to play an event that has doubled the purse since the last time that we had an, an event here. So it's a really special week. All right, so we mentioned the three Solheim Cup appearances, all part of winning teams, as we said. What was your reaction when Stacy asked you to be an assistant? Was it a phone call? Was it in person? Did you get emotional? Uh, a phone call, absolutely emotional. Stacy has been one of my best friends during my time on tour, and Solheim Cups have been amongst the best weeks in my career. If I look back on my career and I say, like, there's five amazing events that happened, I mean, three of those were Solheim Cups. It is the greatest week. It's the greatest honor to represent your country and your captain and your fellow teammates. And it's just so much fun. And so to be an assistant and, and help Stacy and to uh, represent the U S S team over there in Spain, I, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. First event for you this year. We mentioned that only played once last year. How do you view your role in the game these days? My, my role in the game, I would say that my role in the game is probably the same as it was um, my first couple of years on tour when I joined the tour in 2001. It's always been to um, to grow the game, but I love golf. If you spend any time around me, I absolutely love to play golf, whether it's for fun or in a corporate day. And of course, there's nothing better than getting a chance to compete. Last year, I had back surgery, so I ended up trying to come back and, and play in Dow, which was a little bit earlier, so I didn't play the rest of the year. And, of course, I'm really excited to play my first LPGA event this year at uh, right here at Wilshire Country Club, which, if you've played, is just such a fun golf course, and it's in really good shape. Natalie, you really had a celebrated early career, and when you turned pro after, you know, winning uh, at the NCAA at Arizona, a lot of expectations uh, and you had some early success, but I wonder overall, how do you assess your career in terms of, you know, whether you fulfilled by it? Uh, did you feel like you overachieved, achieved more than you expected, uh, underachieved? How would you talk about it now? Yes, to all the above. <laughs> right? Like I had no idea how incredible it would be to be a professional golfer for 20 years. The places that I would get to go the countries I would get to compete in, playing on teams on Solheim and World Cup and just incredible memories that I've been able to have. Did I have expectations of winning a lot? Absolutely, yes. I mean, that's all I knew when I came out of college was winning tournaments. It was way harder out here than I expected. And I, so from that standpoint, no, I didn't achieve everything that I wanted as far as that goes. But I also never expected that I would have played more than Five, 10 years, I didn't know. And I didn't know that I would love it so much and love to compete. And I would play that many, you know, worldwide events and be on three Solheim Cups. So when I look back, unless I get asked specifically of, yeah, did I want to achieve more? For sure I did. There's nobody who would ever put more pressure on themselves than me. And I still have tons of aspirations and goals of what I'd like to do in golf. But if I look back, it's all incredibly positive. I've been so fortunate and I never expected, I thought I was going to have to retire in 2010 before my first back surgery. So mm -hmm. I am definitely playing on borrowed time. Well, speaking of those injuries, I've read where you actually probably tried to push yourself through a little too much, maybe even against the advice sure, that's of, what uh, athletes do. <laughs> uh, of Butch Harmon and others. I wonder if you'd do anything differently if you had the chance to, um, to relive those years, so to speak. 
Yeah, I wouldn't have hit, tried to hit every single range ball that I ever saw. I mean, <laughs> I love to practice. I have, I love to hit balls. I I even, you know, today getting ready to play, I wish I could just go bang balls for the next six hours. I love to practice. I love the game. I love to get better. There's so much to work on. And if I could have, you know, had just taken that by like a quarter and maybe just practice, you know, two or three hours a day instead of so much. But when I didn't play well, I wanted to practice more. And I definitely um, always came back too soon, you know, always trained too hard. But I, I always felt like that's what athletes do. And I do I regret doing that? No. If I would do it all over again. Yeah, for sure. I do it differently. <laughs> Wouldn't we all do tons of things differently? So, Natalie, I'm just wondering if a young player came to you these days, and, and maybe some have, and asked you for advice, what would, what would the advice be? Go, go find Nellie Corda and see what she's doing. <laughs> I asked Butch. I, my advice would be to not emotional practice. I would say that I definitely wore out my body. I, it's, it's, I never overtrained, but I always just love to practice. And I played a lot of golf. I at least the first played a lot of tournaments, first five or six years. I feel like I played every single event. I would play 13 in a row. I didn't take weeks off, even though Butch would always tell me to take weeks off, but I loved to play and I loved um, to compete. But I would say to definitely make sure that you're smart with the way that you practice and um, you know, the way that you handle a tournament week, it takes a lot of mental energy and physical energy to play four rounds and play a full season of 30 events with the countries that we travel to and everything else that's involved. And so to really take all that in consideration, but all the young players, I mean, especially the ones out here, they, they do all that. Natalie, why were you uh, such a good Solheim Cup teammate, and, and why will you be a good Solheim Cup assistant captain? I think I was a good teammate because I love to play with everybody, and I never complained. I was always incredibly positive. I loved Solheim so much that it's like if we lost a match, I was just excited about the next match. If we lost a hole, I was excited about the next hole. I've always had a really short-term memory with anything that was um, you know, negative when it came to, came to golf. And I think as a captain, I bring a lot of energy and a lot of positive energy. And I love the history and the tradition of Solheim Cups, and I love the game. And so nobody's going to be cheering harder for those players, not only this year and, and that in that week, and hopefully that just gets in, infused into them. Natalie Gulbis in the field in Los Angeles this week. Good to see you. Thanks for taking the time Thank to you. join us, and have a great Thanks. week. Thanks for having me on. You guys, too. Meanwhile, the PGA Tour is in Mexico for the Mexico Open at Vedanta. John Rahm in the field and enters the week not only as the world's number one ranked player, but also the defending champion. Gets his title defense underway tomorrow, 9.18 a.m. Eastern, alongside Argentina's Emiliano Grillo and Sweden's Alex Noren. So how did Rahm get it done last year? Well, that week, he led the field in driving distance among measured drives at more than 340 yards, also ranked second in strokes gained off the tee, and third in strokes gained tee to green, and his iron play wasn't far behind, hit more than 76% of his greens and ranked tied for seventh for the week.